thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. The appropriate response to an answered prayer. Right. Jesus was proceeding toward Jerusalem where he would meet his appointed destiny. His appointed destiny in Jerusalem was death. He's traveling somewhere along the border between Samaria and Galilee where he enters, hurry up and open your candy paper. Where he enters a village and he encounters 10 lepers. Are you with me? He encounters 10 lepers. And we all should, in essence, see ourselves in these men. Because verse 12 says, if you read it, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar. Let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. Don't you get caught up in your pride. Because just like these lepers men, you and I have some shortcomings as well. People are so quick to pass judgment on people because they don't have the same shortcomings that they have. But we all have some shortcomings and some dilemmas. In the Bible, Leprosy is a dreaded disease. And you remember last week when we were preaching and I told you how in the Old Testament and in the Bible uh, in particular, there are some things that are noted and denoted as pictures. Right. Remember I told you that? Right. Well, leprosy is a picture. It is a picture of sin. So according to Leviticus 14, leprosy rendered a man to be ceremonially uh, defiled so that if he was healed, he still had to go to the priest and carry out an extensive ritual of cleansing before he could be accepted back into the religious community and worship. Because the leper was considered utterly unclean, both physically and spiritually. The lepers were judged to be dead. They were known to society as the living dead. They had to wear black clothes. And they had to acknowledge the fact that they were not normal in the people's eyes. And so, not to mention either white or pink discoloration of a patch of skin would also give them away. Right. Us developed a foul discharge. Yeah. Oh. Our brows fell off. The eyes became stout. Vocal cords became unfiltered. Voices became hoarse. 
professional help from a professional counselor. I'm not against it. It's, it's okay if you got to take a pill every now and then to calm your nerve. I understand it's a real place. Some things are medically designed. I understand. I get it. But ultimately, if the pharmacy closed down, if they run out of drugs to support a person's uh, anxiety, what the world needs is not wrapped up in a bottle, but it's wrapped up in human flesh. The world needs God. Jackson needs God. Our young people will put down their drugs and stop shooting every day in our city. We need God. Our young men will start respecting their parents. But if God is not in it, nothing will work. I pause and repeat it. I say if God is not in it, then nothing will work. So the first step to receiving God's blessing is to acknowledge your own low place. They knew that they were unclean and the Bible says they stood afar off. And then verse 13 says and they lifted their voices and said Jesus have mercy on us. Now here is uh, uh, something I want to highlight. Even before they were healed, God had intervened. Can I prove it? You look like you want me to prove it. If leprosy affected the vocal cord, if it limited their ability to speak, how is it that the Bible says they cried out with a loud voice? I wish you had help me with this. I, I, we at church, but none of us don't have it. I said, how is it that they were able to cry out with a loud voice? They cried out. Their disease didn't stop their determination. Can I put it to you on your level, black people? People do what they want to do when they want to do it. I said people do what they want to do when they want to do it. I wish you had help with me. They cried out, here's what they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They knew Jesus by name, but they also called him Master. Calling him Jesus by name. But why did they call him master? They call him master because when you call him master, you are acknowledging his authority. I wish I had some more people. When you call him master, you are acknowledging his authority, his reign, his rulership over your situation. 
So when you get home today, you ought to walk in your house saying, Master, this is your house. Master, this is your house. Master, I'm yours. Master, I'm going to your job in the morning. Master, I'm eating your food. Master, I'm sleeping in your bed. Master, I need you to watch over my children, my grandchildren, my children, children, children. Master, my family need you. Master, my heart is broken. And you really saying you have the authority. You ought to acknowledge him as master. Some of us can't get what we request because we don't put him in his proper place. He got to be Lord. Then he got to be master. I ain't coming this morning. I just came to this talk. He got to be Lord. And they gotta be master. These lepers, you should have sung, you should have been there. Take their proper place under the Lord Jesus' sovereign authority. And here's what the lepers do they pleaded, Jesus, master, have mercy. On us. Mercy, like grace, is God's undeserved favor. See, grace is getting what we do not deserve. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. So by crying out, mercy. These men were acknowledging that they didn't uh, deserve to be healed. But we know if you just give us a little mercy, we'll be healed anyway. See, you don't deserve what you have. But God keep giving you mercy. Your knowledge is wrong. Morning by morning. I'm tired. I'm not going to preach down. Real mercy. I see. You know what? Last night I went to bed. Expecting to get up this morning. But it was God's mercy. He got me up this morning. See, I didn't even have to have the ability. To bend down and get up. But I can move. Because of God's mercy. I didn't need nobody to help me put my shoes on. Because God gave me mercy. See, you sitting up on a shot all the time about the stuff. But every now and then you all forget about the stuff. And thank God for just having some mercy on you. Where would you be? God didn't have mercy on you. Jesus told them to go, show themselves to the priest. While they were walking, while they were on their way, they noticed a change had come over them. They were not healed when they got to the priest. But while they were on their way. God can do what he want to do. When you submit to his authority. And when you walk in obedience. See what I like about God. He blesses according to his will. But he surely honors 
when you really obey. Yes. See, all ten of the men were healed. One did give thanks because the appropriate response to an answered prayer is thanksgiving. Yeah. See, we are about to approach Christmas with just exited Thanksgiving. And uh, I know it's all right to, to go out and shop. It's all right to, to buy food to eat and put gifts under your tree if that's what you desire to do. But uh, the real reason for the season is to just simply reflect on how good the Lord really is. Yeah. The one that came back, he was a Samaritan. Yes. See, the reason why that's important because the most despised and rejected of all men were Samaritan. And the fact that this man was a Samaritan showed the way of salvation is open to all men who call on the name of the Lord. Yes, Charles Spurgeon, he points out that while ten men prayed, ten men prayed, only one man praised. Oh, yes, my Lord. Ten men prayed, asked God to heal them. Ten men asked God to have mercy on them. But only one man turned around, came back, Give God praise. Yes. I don't know what it done for you. And you really don't know what it done for me. But every now and then, I feel like that Samaritan. I want to go down on my knees. Every now and then, I want to fall at the feet of Jesus. Tell God, thank you. That's what he did in verse 16. He went and he glorified God. He shouted, glorified God. He witnessed. He wanted everyone to know.